Hello, everyone. I am so excited. This is my first ever Facebook Live. Hello, Wag Out Loud Unleashed community members. It's so good to have you here. If you could, in the comments, tell me who's here and where you're from. We are on the platform called StreamYard. And in order for me to see your name and your avatar, you need to allow StreamYard to show your image and name on Facebook. So uh, if you didn't do it already, just go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook. And there's just one little button that you need to click and I'll be able to see you. So welcome, everybody. We're all dog lovers and I love chatting with other dog lovers. I am Krista. I am the top dog at Wag Out Loud, and I also have a weekly podcast called the Wag Out Loud podcast that comes out Wednesday mornings. So if you guys have not checked it out, I highly encourage you to because my guests are amazing and I learn something every single day. So if you are obsessed as I am about your dog's health and wellness, definitely check it out. So let's get started on this. Uh, as I mentioned, when I put this invite out, one of my most asked questions is, how do I feed my dog a healthy diet on a budget? And especially now during this COVID crazy, a lot of us don't have the financial means that we once did. Maybe we own more than one dog, Maybe we own a big dog or several big dogs, and I get it that stretching our dollar, uh, you know, is hard when we want to feed them and feed them well. So I want to go on to this amazing statistic. Uh, according to the American Pet Products Association, people will spend $38 billion on food and treats for their pets just this year. And that's a little over $1 billion compared to last year. So my first tip, I guess, um, I know that most people feed a dry processed food, better known as kibble. And that's okay. I'm not going <laughs> to ridicule, ridicule anybody for that. But what I encourage you to do is look for brands that specifically name the type of meat in the first, I'd say first three to five ingredients. A lot of times we see meat byproducts or something called meal. And let's just say that the first ingredient is poultry meal. Well, I wouldn't recommend that food because that leaves it wide open. You don't know, is that chicken? Is that duck? Is that turkey? So definitely read your ingredients and you want to invo you want to avoid ingredients like dyes or sugar, high salt, preservatives, like BHA, BHT, uh, I would stay away from those as well. One of the best ways to improve the quality of whatever you are feeding, I would say, is to add fresh food. So if you're feeding a kibble diet, you can add any fresh food that could be greens, that could be goat milk, that could be other veggies, fruits, it makes a huge difference. So um, let's, well, I don't even know where to start. People ask me also if I am going to feed kibble, because usually that's less expensive than a fresh or raw diet, which ones would I recommend? And there are some that are great. And I would suggest Farmina, that's F as in Frank, A-R-M-I-N-A. And there's one called Buckley. They can be found at Whole Foods. 
or Nature's Variety. You can find that at your le local pet boutique, or I know that you can order it online as well. Another one that I really like is Visionary Keto Pet Foods. They have not only a dry product, but I believe a freeze-dried and a frozen. And they are a keto kibble, very low in carbs. So I've checked them out. Actually, they are a product partner of mine. You can find them on the Wag Out Loud website with a discount code. They have really well-sourced ingredients, so I feel good about recommending them. Okay, kibble typically includes less meat and often includes some sort of a grain. And if it's a grain-free kibble, then they'll add legumes or potatoes instead as the starch. So usually very little protein. And if you look at the guaranteed analysis of a kibble bag, most contain less than 25% protein and way too many carbs, you know, upwards of 50 to 60% carbs. That's way too much. Um, so my regular listeners have heard me talk about fresh food and raw food, but even if you're feeding kibble, either for convenience sake or for cost sake, you can always add a topper. And you guys may have seen these toppers in your local pet boutique. They have freeze-dried toppers. You can actually add a bit of meat from home. Uh, I like to go to the grocery store, see what meat is on sale, whether that's beef, chicken, fish, pork. And you can always add that to a kibble diet. And it will make all the difference in the world. Another topper, one of the ones that I love the most are just eggs. Eggs are just about the most perfect protein that you can find in the whole world. Whether you do a scrambled egg or you can do raw eggs for dogs, but add that to your kibble and that would be a great source of added protein. Um, thanks for saying hello, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Another thing that I do is I have a base of veggies, or you could do kibble, and add canned sardines and water. You see them at the grocery store. I think they're three cans for $3, and that is an excellent source of not only protein, but the much necessary omega-3 acids and other nutrients that prevent cancer, that heal inflammation. So I highly recommend the canned sardines as well. Back to the leafy greens. Um, you guys might know that dogs have a hard time assimilating raw vegetables. So you either have to lightly steam them, saute, or put them in a blender till they're chopped really fine. Um, so one thing that you can do is just buy some frozen chopped greens, whether it's kale or spinach, and add that to your kibble. That is a possibility as well. Listen to this. A study at Purdue University, it showed that dogs on a diet of a dry commercial pet food, which is kibble, they were given leafy green veggies on top of their kibble at least three times a week. Get this, 90% less likely to develop cancer than dogs who are not given the leafy greens. I find that absolutely amazing. So that's a great instance where you just add your fresh food on top of your kibble. How about blueberries? Well, Winston, my dog, he loves blueberries and they have excellent phytonutrients and antioxidants and you really only need to feed a few. So that is something else that you can add to their diet. Uh, I already mentioned the freeze-dried toppers that are really pieces of traditional and organ meats that you can mix with their kibble. Um, I know Instinct, 
Steve's, Real Food, Stella and Chewy's, Dr. Marty's, Primal, they all have a freeze-dried raw product. Again, you want to make sure that the diet, of course, is complete and balanced. So what you want to do is feed 75% kibble, and then 25% is your added topper. So the topper that we just talked about, the freeze-dried, the greens, the canned sardines, the eggs. And I really am a proponent of variety. So you guys want to give your dog at least a different source of protein, you know, rotate it. That's what I do. And because every protein has a different amino acid profile. So you want to make sure that they're getting all the nutrients they want. And I kind of tell people, imagine that we, all we could eat every day, twice a day was Captain Crunch cereal. Well, I don't think that that would be very nutritious, number one. And wouldn't you get bored? So give your dog some variety. There's so many things out there. I just highly recommend that you rotate the food that you're giving. And maybe the toppers that I'm recommending to make it stretch a li little further, maybe do that two or three times a week. You don't have to do it every single day. But I just think if you're strapped for cash, that stretching it out is the way to go. People are so hung up on, oh my gosh, it has to be complete and balanced every single day. That is not true. The dog's body is going to acclimate to whatever you're feeding. And maybe one day you're doing the fish for the omega-3s and the next day you're doing beef. That's fine. Your dog's body is going to use what it needs. So don't get so hung up on every day has to be complete and balanced. But I would say a lot of people also tell me I feed my dog really well. I feed them chicken and rice. That's fine, but if that's all you're feeding, yes, they are going to be missing a lot of nutrients. So I would go on to, there's so many people that I highly recommend. Dr. Karen Becker has great recipes for home-cooked diets. Um, Dr. Judy Morgan, she has pup loaf that you can find on YouTube or just Google it. They're complete and balanced. So if you're going to cook at home, I would highly suggest looking at a recipe that is proven and has everything your dog needs. Omega-3 fatty acids, if you are feeding a kibble, there are not enough omega-3s. And they're the, the good fats that keep down inflammation. So... One of the products that I have found that is just amazing, instead of giving fish oil, because fish oil actually rapes our oceans, and you have to refrigerate it, and it doesn't last very long. It can go rancid. Um, I found this amazing product. It's called Natrix One, and you can find it on the Wag Out Loud website in the partner product section, also with discounts. And... It's an omega-3 anti-inflammatory supplement that does not harm our oceans because it has a blend of olive and camelina seed is the source of the oil. So I highly recommend that product if you need to give your dog an omega-3. Okay. One thing that I love giving Winston and again, it doesn't have to be every single day, but raw goat milk. You can find it online. You can find it in your local boutique. It is a game changer. I personally don't like giving dairy products from cow's milk to dogs because most of the time they are lactose intolerant and can't assimilate the proteins in dairy products. But goat milk... They do really well on. They love it. You can just give, you know, a very little amount, not every day, maybe a tablespoon added to your dog's kibble. 
and it's nature's probiotic, really. Um, it's good for GI support. It's full of vitamins and minerals and other trace elements. So it's great for their immune system. So if you can fit that into your budget, again, you don't have to give it every single day. You can spread it out. You'll see a huge difference in your dog. I feed a raw diet. And you can check for commercial brands. Uh, there's some also on my website with discounts. You can also see about the companies that sell raw in bulk. And one of them I know is rawbistro.com. You can check them out. Maybe you feed kibble three times a week and you feed raw the other four days a week. Again, just be creative and stretch it out. It doesn't have to be the same thing every single day. Our dog's guts are very short. They have a short digestive system. And my gosh, dogs can eat rocks and dirt and bark. So they have hearty stomachs. Um, so don't worry about that. But if you're introducing your dog to a raw diet, you definitely want to go slow and add that into their existing food, I'd say over five to seven days. Um, if you want to feed raw, another thing I would recommend is a co-op. So you can just Google and see if there are raw co-ops in your area. And that is another great way to save money. Um, again, I just urge you to focus on as much whole and fresh food as possible. You might be paying a little bit more up front, but you're going to see a much healthier dog. And of course, you're going to have a lot less costly vet bills <laughs> if they are healthy. So I want to take questions. What are you guys doing? What are you feeding? Do you have any recommendations? Because I am not the expert. Uh, I speak with experts, as you guys know. So you want to know about the, okay, we have somebody asking, can you share the study about the leafy greens? Yes, I believe that was done on Scotty's. And the main cancer that they were looking at was lymphoma. And again, that was a study done by Purdue University that showed that dogs on a diet of dry commercial kibble fed leafy greens as well at least three times a week were 90% less likely to, to develop cancer than dogs that did not have the leafy greens. So you can definitely look at that, um, look it up. I think it's amazing and a true testament to adding fresh food to our dog's diet. Who else? Please, please post questions or I would love to know what you guys are feeding or if you have any recommendations of how to stretch out your dog's diet. So please share with us what that looks like. Okay. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Some people might be wondering what's going on with this Wag Out Loud LTOs. And another thing that I'm working on, which I'm super excited about, it's going to be like a live stream QVC HSN for dog products because I only promote products that I know, like, and trust and my dog, Winston, is the perfect guinea pig for all of these products that I've tried. There's been some that I don't recommend. But this show is going to be coming out with my favorite products. And LTOs is limited time offers. So if you guys can imagine on any device, a computer, a phone, that I will have these manufacturers on. Spokesperson is going to be on live video with me talking about the product and actually demonstrating it on a dog live. And they have to make an offer that has never been seen before. 
minimum 20% off. So that's another thing that we're working on here and very excited that it's coming out. So look for that. And for those people that are not familiar with, let's say, the podcast or the resources that we offer on the Wag Out Loud website, check it out. Um, we have master classes, we have webinars. I just love hearing from the experts, and things are changing every single day as to different integrative approaches to medicine, to new products, new science, new findings. So that is what I'm here to help you guys with is to gather all that information and try to hone it down and share with you other ways to keep our dogs healthy for longer. So that is really all that I have to give to you guys, I just wanted to share a little bit. I hope that this was helpful and I really appreciate everybody being a part of this community. I want to do so much more. And if anybody is interested in giving their input, if you have any ideas for topics, for products, for guests that we can have speak here in our community, I am so open to that and it's our community it's not just mine so with that i want to thank everybody for being with us today and i appreciate you if you can invite all your dog loving friends to be part of this community then you guys are going to be the first ones to find out about all the new information and oh thank you thank you for the comments i appreciate it you guys uh, in the future, just so you know, this platform is StreamYard, and I'm really loving it. But if you want to be seen here on Facebook, like Kelly Bodwin, her comment, uh, you have to approve that with StreamYard. So you would just, just go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook, click it once, and anytime you're ever on this platform, um, we can see who you are, and answer your questions directly. So with that, have a tail wagging day, everyone. If you take any of these tips for the sardines or the blueberries or the leafy greens or the eggs, I would love to hear from you. So please share with us what you find and any changes in your dog by feeding them differently. I really appreciate it. Hug your dog today. I appreciate everyone. Bye.